Your Cricut is so much more than a machine that you can just make t-shirts with. With an ever-growing list of design features and machine capabilities, your Cricut machine can help you to craft just about any project. In this A to Z video, I'm going to explain features and give you some helpful tips and tricks that all the professionals use. My name is Kelly, and I'm coming to you from my crafting den to teach you about Cricut today. I've been using Cricut or similar machines for several years, so I've picked up a few things here and there, and I hope to share them with you today. A is for attach. And the attach feature is probably the first feature that you'll end up having problems with in Cricut Design Space. This feature allows you to design whatever you want on your canvas and keep it in exactly the same location on your canvas. So by click dragging and selecting everything, right clicking and clicking attach, everything that you design in your canvas will stay in exactly that same location. You will need to make sure to attach all of the same colors together. So everything that you want to cut out of blue will need to be attached and so on and so forth. If you don't attach them, then when you go to the Make It panel, Cricut Design Space will try and optimize the space on your media and you'll see everything lining up in a little row on the top of your canvas. But don't worry, just go back and attach everything and you'll be fine. B is for bookmarking fonts. Now, with so many amazing fonts that you can choose on Envato Elements, it's sometimes really difficult to kind of keep track of your favorites. Sifting through all of the fonts that I have already installed on my computer and finding my favorite Envato Elements fonts can be quite a task. But by clicking the little bookmark on the right hand side, you can save your fonts into a separate category in Cricut Design Space, and then you can find all of your favorite Envato Elements fonts. So when I'm able to bookmark some of my favorite fonts, it's one of the first things that I do. When you want to find these fonts again, just click on bookmarked on the right hand side of your screen next to system, and all of your favorite fonts will be right there waiting for you. C is for contour. The contour feature is a type of feature that you will use to remove certain parts of a basic cut single layer design. You can also use this feature to separate out your design into a multi-layer design by clicking on it and selecting the elements that you don't want to have in that layer and then duplicating the layers and repeating the process. This feature is particularly useful for projects that you may want to have layered in different colors, as you don't need to attach the pieces together that you have already separated out because they are already part of one layer design, making it so much easier to line things up when you're done. D is for the deep cut blade. Now the deep cut blade is one of many additional blades that you can buy for your machines. It is a blade with 1.7 millimeter clearance and it will cut all of your thicker but not necessarily harder materials. Now we're talking things like craft foam, some faux leather, and even some of your thinner types of leathers. This blade and the housing is not compatible with the fine point blade as the actual deep cut blade holder itself is shorter than the fine point blade to allow clearance for the thicker materials. So you won't be able to use the deep cut blade in the fine point blade housing and vice versa. E is for external designs. You can very easily download hundreds of external designs from Envato Elements and import them into Cricut Design Space so that you can cut, draw, and even print and cut your designs, which we'll get into a little bit later. I often run to Envato Elements to find the exact design I want as they have thousands of designs to choose from and I can pretty much find everything that I need. And I can download it under one no lock-in contract that you can cancel at any time. So it's an absolute win-win. And I can upload these external designs into Cricut Design Space because they are SVGs, PNGs, JPEGs, and so many different other file formats that I can use. F is for flatten. The flatten feature is something that you will need to use when you're designing something for print then cut. You will need to make sure that whatever you have designed on your canvas is properly flattened into one layer if you only want to cut the outline. So you will need to select all of the layers, right click and then click flatten. Or you can click flatten in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You do need to make sure that you don't have any other layers like a basic cut layer, as any of the layers that you do have will affect how your end product or your end sticker will look. G is for grouping. 
The grouping feature is something that you will use while you're busy designing things in Design Space and you want to keep your elements together on your canvas, but you don't necessarily want to cut them in that same space. And that's how it differs from the attach feature, but they will be optimized in the make it panel and they won't all cut in exactly that location. So you can use grouping to keep different colors together or to organize your design a little bit, but like I said, they won't cut in that exact location. So it just helps to keep your canvas a little bit more neat. H is for hex codes. If you're designing something in design space and you're needing to use a very specific color, then you can just use the hex codes. A hex code is a hexadecimal code of a very specific color, which uses letters and numbers to locate that color on the spectrum. So if you have a business logo with a very specific color, then you can find their exact company color to use on your project. When you open up the color panel, you can click on advanced and at the bottom of the screen, you'll see where you can add in the hex codes. And from there, it'll automatically select the color that you've chosen. I is for infusible ink. Infusible ink is a product that allows you to transfer ink from a sheet to a product with the help of a heat source. Infusible ink is essentially pre-printed sublimation sheets and it works on the same principles of heating up the item to 190 degrees and keeping it pressed for 60 to 90 seconds, depending on what you're using. And it transfers the ink from the sheet onto your item, essentially staining the fabrics of your item. So instead of having a layer like vinyl where you place on top of your t-shirt, you will need to have a polyester or a sublimation ready item to transfer your infusible inks onto. It is important to note that you cannot use cotton as the inks don't adhere to the fibers in cotton. And it's also recommended to have a white item as that really helps the colors to stand out. You can use infusible ink on mugs and many other sublimation ready items like mouse pads, key rings, socks, the list is endless. J is for joy. The Cricut Joy is the baby of the family, but despite its size, it's still a pretty powerful machine. Most people want one because it's so small and portable, so you can easily put it in your handbag and take it with you on holiday if you're wanting to make projects at a friend's house. There are lots of different options. It cuts all of your basic materials like your cardstock, vinyl, iron-on, but it can also do quite a few other things like acetate and faux leather. So despite its size, you can still see why it's a very popular machine that most people like to use to complement their other machines or to buy as an entry into the market because of its low price point. K is for the knife blade. Now the knife blade is only compatible with the Maker and Maker 3 machines. It is a much thicker, more heavy duty blade than the rest, and it can cut all of your thicker and heavier materials. So we're talking heavy chipboard, balsa wood, tooling leather, and so many more things. This blade uses its own housing and is not compatible with any other blades or housings. You should also be using the strong grip mat when using the knife blade as it needs the extra adhesion because of the force that it uses to press down and cut your thicker materials. I would also suggest taping your materials down to make sure that they don't move around while you're busy cutting using this blade. And make sure to move your star rollers to the side of the machine so that you don't mess up your materials. L is for layers. Now in Cricut Design Space, on the right hand side of your mat, you will see the layers panel. Each individual item that you add into the canvas will have its own layer and each layer can have its own operation. So you're able to add many different things to your canvas and combine them in unique ways to create your project. You can also change the order of your layers if you want some things to be brought to the front or if you want some things to be at the back of your project. You can do many more things with layers like attaching them together, grouping them, slicing them. They really are very important when it comes to playing around with your projects and getting to know how design space works. M is for mats. In order to cut the wide variety of materials that you can on your Cricut, you're going to more than likely need to use a cutting mat. Now this is a durable piece of plastic that fits into your machine underneath the rollers on either side 
and has a sticky area on the inside where you can tack all of your materials down to to ensure that they don't move while you're busy cutting them. There are four different kinds of mats that you can use with your machine. The light grip mat is the blue mat, and that's used for all of your thinner materials like copy paper, as an example. The green standard grip mat is used for the majority of your materials, cardstock, iron-on, vinyl, etc. The pink mat is the fabric grip mat, and that's what you would use to cut all of your fabric materials. And lastly, we have the purple mat, which is the strong grip mat. And like I mentioned for the knife blade, you would use this for all of your thicker, heavier, harder materials that need a little bit of extra gripping strength. You will need mats when you are cutting the majority of your materials, as currently only smart materials can be cut easily on the machine without a cutting mat. Be sure to keep the protective sheeting on your mat at all times when you're not using it, as you'd want to avoid any unnecessary dust and hair buildup on the mat that can compromise the stickiness. If you do lose a little bit of stick, just give it a very light wash and you can use most household dishwashing detergents. But be sure to give it a very light wash as you don't want to wash the adhesive off. N is for never forget to calibrate. Calibrating your machine for both print then cut and use with the knife blade is pretty important. Calibrating the machine allows it to have better accuracy and more control over where the machine is going to cut. So if you are using the print then cut function and you find that your cuts are just a little bit on the outside of the edge, then you might want to do a calibration to try and help the machine line up a little bit better. So the calibration allows you to test and see where your machine is registering and how it's lining up. So once you've done calibration once, and maybe you might need to do it a few times, you may find that you have a much more accurate and much better cut afterwards. O is for offset. Now, the offset feature allows you to add an even line to the outside of whatever design that you are making or onto the inside of the object. This is particularly useful for things like print then cut stickers when you want it to have a little white edge around the outside of the sticker. As you're able to add this offset and then cut the offset instead of the actual design itself, making your stickers look super professional. You can also use the offset feature for coloring the inside of your words when you're using the pen operation. In order to do this, you will need to use an internal offset. So with the offset feature open, drag the little dot to the left hand side of the little gray line and you will see it go into a negative value. I normally set mine to around negative 0.03, depending on how thick your pen is. And you can continue to apply that offset until you have the entire inside of your word filled in. And then you can color in with your Cricut. P is for print then cut. Now we've already spoken about print then cut a few times, but this is a very useful feature if you're wanting to print out full color designs or logos or things with a gradient. Things that you wouldn't be able to get when you're cutting it out of vinyl. Now it is important to remember to make sure that you have the same printing medium as what you do for your printer. So if you have an inkjet printer, you will need an inkjet compatible printing medium. So inkjet printable vinyl as an example. Once you've flattened your design, Cricut Design Space will then place a black border around all of the designs on your page. And once you have printed that out on your household printer and stuck it to your cutting mat, it will read over the black lines around the outside, locate where your design is, and then it'll cut it out on the outside of where you've told it to. Q is for the quick swap housing. The quick swap housing is an adaptive blade tool that allows you to easily swap out tips for various functions. So you actually only need to buy one quick swap housing and then you can buy the several tips to go along with it, which will save you a lot of money at the end of the day and allow you to do so many more things. The quick swap housing has a little silver button on the top of it. And once you press this button, the tip will pop off at the bottom and so you can very easily swap it out with another tip. The tips that you can get with the quick swap housing are the single scoring wheel, double scoring wheel, debossing tip, engraving tip, 
perforation blade, and wavy blade. So you can see just how many different unique projects you can make with this one tool. R is for the rotary blade. The rotary blade is a blade that is only compatible with the Maker and Maker 3 machines. Now it does come standard with the Maker machine, so if you have the Maker 3 you will need to buy it separately. This housing is similar to the knife blade in that it is not compatible with any of the other housings, and it is used to cut all of your unbonded fabric materials, so you can use the pink fabric mat when you're using the rotary blade. I wouldn't suggest trying to cut designs that are too small, as because of the nature of the blade itself, you won't be getting very fine details with this blade. S is for slice. This feature allows you to cut different objects out of each other. So if you have a square and you're wanting to cut a heart in the middle of the square, you can do that with this feature. Place the heart where you want to cut it out of the square, select both of the objects, right click, and slice, or you can click slice in the bottom right hand corner. If you're not able to use the slice feature because it's grayed out, you may not have only two layers selected. So check to see if you've only got one layer or three or more layers selected. You can also use this to break up a design into multiple pieces, similar to what we spoke about with the contour feature. You can add in a square, Overlap it on top of the sections you want to cut out and slice those together. And when you've done this a few times, you will have a few different layers that you can change the colors of. T is for test cuts. Test cuts are incredibly important when it comes to cutting a new material on your Cricut. Instead of cutting an entire design and realizing right at the end that it hasn't actually cut through the vinyl, please just do a very simple test cut. You can cut any shape or letter around one centimeter or half an inch, just to make sure that the cut settings that you want to use will actually cut through the medium that you're trying. It will only take a minute and it'll save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Please do your test cuts. <laughs> U is for unlock proportions. If you're wanting to change the height but not the width of your design or the other way around, you can click the little padlock in the top of your screen and this will unlock the proportions, which means that you will be able to change one value and leave the other value the same. So you'll be able to make something taller but not longer or you can do it the other way around and you can lock the proportions to make sure that it stays in exactly the same size ratio that you want it. V is for vinyl. Vinyl is an incredibly popular thing to cut on your Cricut machines. And you get two different types of vinyl. There is adhesive vinyl and heat transfer vinyl. In the Cricut world, they're referred to as vinyl, which is your adhesive or your sticker vinyl, and iron-on, which is your heat transfer vinyl. Sticker vinyl can be used on many different things, books, mugs, cars, you can even use removable vinyl on your walls to make sure that you don't damage the paint. Iron-on or heat transfer vinyl is the type of vinyl that you would apply to t-shirts, socks, wood, and so many other applications. It is applied with heat at different temperatures depending on your vinyl, typically around 165 degrees with pressure to make sure that it sticks properly to whatever it is you are trying to apply it to and make sure that it'll stick in the long term. There are many different colors of vinyl and they can get really fun. W is for weld. The weld feature is something that you will use to permanently stick two shapes together. So you can make a solid shape or combine multiple different shapes into the same layer. Without using the undo feature, there is no way to undo something that you have welded. Be sure that this is exactly what you want to use for your shapes, and if you're not quite sure, make a duplicate before you weld. You may also need to weld fonts together that you have separated or ungrouped to letters, as if it is a script type font, it may cut out the letters individually, which you may not want. X is for Control X, which is the cut shortcut. 
There are many shortcuts that you can use in Cricut Design Space and Control X is a very useful one when you want to cut something out of your canvas and paste it in later. You can press Control X on your keyboard to remove an item that you have selected and you can even press Control V multiple times to paste that same thing over and over again if you want to duplicate it. Y is for the yield sign. The yield sign is a little yellow triangle that'll show on your layers panel when there is something wrong with that layer. For example, if you are using Print Then Cut and your Print Then Cut design is a little bit larger than the maximum size possible for Print Then Cut, it will show a little yield sign. Once you click on the sign, it'll tell you exactly what is wrong and what you need to do to correct that layer. So it'll say to you, your design is too large, please reduce it to these specifications in order to print and cut. Another thing it can show you is when that operation that you have selected is not compatible with the machine that you have selected. So if you're wanting to deboss and you have your Cricut Joy or your Cricut Explore selected, you cannot deboss on that machine. So it'll tell you that that operation is not compatible with that machine. And lastly, but probably the most important one is Control Z, and that is undo. This is probably a feature that I use all the time as it allows you to undo the last action or actions that you have done on your canvas. So if you've made a little mistake and you've moved something on your canvas by accident, you can just press Control Z to undo that move. And if you're not quite comfortable with keyboard shortcuts yet, then you can use the two arrows in the top left-hand side of your screen to undo and redo that move. Don't forget to subscribe to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel for more Cricut videos in the future. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you in my next video. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.